Welcome back to Fortress Education, this is Ed. Today, we're going to be talking quickly about CLI Camber Energy. In this video, we're going to give a quick update since my last video that occurred a few weeks ago and then technical analysis and what I think is going to happen here in the next few weeks or so. So without further ado, let's jump right into this one. So this company here has actually released some updates coming up for uh, 17th. So CEI filed on November 22nd and November 23rd and amended and restated financial statements in effort to correct the accounting characterization of certain sales of companies Series C preferred stock. Now before the filing, additional financial statements, all of which were drafted by the company, the company needs to ensure its accounting analysis associated with the corrected items and other matters align with the SEC's interpretation of applicable accounting guidance. Basically what happened was there was some discrepancies in their accounting and they mentioned it and they try to fix it out. So that was basically the main company update for this one, just in case you were wondering. But there is some new SEC filings. So coming in towards this one here on December 9th, 2021, they received around $1 million from an investor in a connection therewith executed and delivered the following the favor for the investor, a promissory note dated on December 8th, 2021, in the principal amount of around $1 million. Now, this representing a 5% initial issue discount uh, and occurring an interest rate of around 10% per annum and maturing around March 8th, 2022. So this is just, again, just the normal kind of operations of them receiving money based on notes and people cashing in notes, and that's normal. Now, the biggest issue that we have coming up is what's going to be voted on at the end of the year on December 30th, 2021 at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time or Houston Time. Uh, I'm not sure if actually Houston Time is Eastern Standard Time, but anyway. Moving on here to approve the filing of an amendment of to the company's article of incorporation to increase the number of authorized shares of common stock from around $250 million or 250 million shares, my bad, to around 1 billion shares. Now, if you were to take a look into how much their shares are trading, that comes out to be around $250 million to around $1 billion in market cap. But... What's going to happen here is because you're increasing the authorized common shares by around four times, the market shared market uh, cap is around basically the same after all. So you might actually see a dip in around 75% in the price if they actually issue all these shares. So basically, uh, initially, let's just imagine it as you have a pool of shares and you have 250 million shares. If you add three times more, so around 750 million, so total, it's around four times as much in that pool at the end, your share becomes diluted by a factor of four. So then your one share becomes really one fourth of the new pool. And what happens is the stock price does often plummet in, uh, in result out of this one here, out of this dilution. So that is something to be very careful on. If it does get approved, the stock price most likely will dip. Now, a big part of this company here is that they've seen a kind of a spike and they do want to capitalize on it by going ahead and buying, for instance, uh, other subsidiary agreements to acquire different things such as here, renewable diesel facility, which is good for the company in the longer term. But really, it's at this point making use of a hype in the mar in their stock market and their stock as well, uh, just to raise more money and make use out of it rather than just seeing it and be like, yeah, that's cool or stock price is high. But what is really the end goal here? End goal is to probably raise more shares and sell it to the public so they can raise more capital to go on further in the longer run. So that's a critical thing to, to think about. The next thing is institutional buyers. Nothing significant here. I mean, you see a lot of indices adding back in November and some removing, but nothing happening in December. And that seems the case with a lot of stocks. Uh, December is a little bit of a quiet month as the holidays are around the corner. Now, insiders, there's nothing to talk about. And let's move on towards technical analysis. But before doing so, make sure to click the subscribe button on the bottom right corner and leave notifications on. Don't forget to drop a like to this video. And if you would like to chat with us, you can join us on our Discord. 
But let's move on towards technical analysis. And in technical analysis, we will be talking about the compliance for the stock price as well. Now, from a technical analysis, we're going to see here a bunch of things that are looking a bit more bearish than a lot of people would like. So first off, you're able to see more of a downtrend going on and a bit more of a sloppy movement in the moving averages. There's a bit of volatility here and it was really kind of bouncing off above the 200 SMA line that is at 99 cents. That seems to be a strong support. 30 SMA is above the 10 SMA, which is a bearish thing. And the price point is below the 50 SMA. Now on the ADX, you're seeing a value for around 969. This doesn't really signal anything. It's very weak. There's not much of a movement. It's trading sideways. William percent R here is a neutral. William percent R is very similar to the relative strength index or RSI. It's neither overbought or oversold at this level. The MACD is sitting very close to almost a zero histogram. It's flat. There's nothing much to talk about in this case. It's very much on the same one tone level. Momentum. Momentum is very close to zero. It's negative 0.05 and it's been very close to zero for a while, but there's nothing really here to talk about in terms of momentum. It has no momentum in either direction. Now, in terms of stochastic fast and stochastic slow, what we do get to see here is that there might be another leg up for this one as it curves a little bit upwards, but it's more of an accumulation that it's kind of signaling on rather than any movement in either direction. The moving averages for this one, from what we're seeing, is currently this stock is oscillating between the two Bollinger Bands, between the 142 and the 91 cents. The moving average bands are almost flat between 128 and 105, but it's more hugging the bottom of the moving average bands at the 105. Volumes are very quiet and there's nothing really that is going on in terms of volumes, nothing like you've seen before. Now, Fibonacci tracements, we're able to see a significant resistance at the 140, 206, 259, 312, 388, and 485. The support is at 33 cents. And from what we're seeing in terms of price line action, there's a significant critical support of $1. And I'll talk about the significance of that $1 in a second. But then below there, it's 87 cents. 69 cents, 49 cents, and then down to 37 cents. Resistances, 108, going up to 118, 137, 154, 172, going a bit higher to 140, and then to 228, 271, and around 305, and you get to see the point 350, 485, etc. Now, there is a bunch of things that has to do with the $1. And if the stock does trade below $1, usually what happens is it either reaches compliances or just the company does a reverse split, even if it avoided that compliance is because they do want to trade in a dollar value. And you get to see in 2019, for instance, they had a one on 50 kind of ratio for a reverse split. And that didn't really play well for the stock as it plummeted down. If it was one over 50, and it traded around $4 after it was trading as a penny stock. And they don't really want to be a penny stock. They want to be at least a dollar stock, even though penny stocks are still considered up to 3 to $5. And you get to see they do have a massive history of splits. Now, mainly before the 2019 October range. Uh, after that, there has been some spikes here and there in 2020 because the market is crazy. But if it does trade below $1 for quite a while, you might actually meet a reverse split, which is never a good news for the stock as you get to see historically and really never was a good news. But at this level, I do think it's going to more accumulate around the $1. This stock will still continue on to dilute as you get to see if it does get approved at the end of the year to increase their number of shares. And that is never a good sign. No matter what anyone tells you, that's not a good sign for the investors. It's a good sign for the company itself. For the people working on there, they got enough cash to make sure they line up their pockets and for the company to grow. But at the end of the day, you're still diluting shares and your share that you're holding currently will be uh, worth a lot less relative to the total shares. What do you think is about this one? Make sure to down in the comments below. Share, subscribe and like and have a wonderful day.
Now, if you're still here on this video, make sure to drop down below and join our Discord. We have a lot of different things going on, including, for instance, members that give us picks for free. It's not pump and dumps, we just things we think about, swings, etc. We also have really exciting bots. Uh, you can actually use those ones. For instance, we're just testing out this bot, for instance, that gives you Fibonacci resistance points, activities, etc. And we have a bunch of free things, totally free. We run on tips here, and you can ask me questions, suggest stocks, etc. It's a really nice community that has been growing up uh, very fast at a very good rate and it's totally free if you would like to join that one feel to do so in the description below and have a wonderful day